Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Herschel Talkers coming up on week 10. Georgia coming off a uh, beatdown of Florida, 36-17 at the cocktail party. It was a great win. We're going to uh, jump into that. And we got a returning guest this week. We got uh, Derek. How are we doing today, Derek? Good, good. Thanks uh, Thanks for having me back. Yeah, how, are, how are things in your way? Yeah, it's going, it's going good, man, especially after um, – Getting the win last week in Jacksonville, two two straight wins. Where uh, where'd you end up watching it? At? I watched it in Gastonia with uh, Sean and Todd. Todd was in town. Ended up watching it at a uh, kickstand. It was a uh, pretty good pretty good crowd. It they I mean they filled the patio up oh, nice. and pretty much all the tables in the in the main room and everything was taken. So it was a, it was a good crowd. Did you get your normal seat? Oh yeah, you know it. Got to. Yeah, yeah. What time did you What time did you get there? It was about two fifteen. Okay. Yeah. Where What are you doing for this week? Going to I might I might go to the Kentucky game or, or not going to it, but I mean I might go to kickstands. Where are you, are you going to go to it or are you busy? No, I've, I've got I've got something going on, so I'm gonna yeah. I've got it set up on how I'm gonna be able to watch the game. But I wish I was gonna be at the at kickstand, but uh, this week I won't be able to be there, unfortunately. Yeah, I might try to go up there and then. Um, from it, you know, hopefully they'll win and be in a good mood. Might watch some of that Bama game too, or watch it somewhere for sure. Yeah, that's a definite. So yeah, Georgia with big win, thirty-six seventeen. Uh, From had a great game, three touchdowns. I think he was seventeen for twenty-four for two hundred and forty yards. Um, I know we were texting early in the week. So what you thought? Think about Fromm's performance, and, and do you think it's Fromm's um, team going forward? And and what do you think about? Justin Fields, I've been reading maybe everybody's, of course, freaking out about is he going to transfer? You know, what's his future look like? Yeah, um, on Fromm's performance, I got to gotta give him credit because the one thing is when you can see someone that's a big-time player um, and, you know, a leader, he had a tough game in LSU. One of the, you know, overall, in my opinion, worst performances in a big game he's had since being at Georgia. and. He, on that bye week, it's one of those things. How are they going to do during that bye week? Are they going to work on and get? And you definitely could tell that from of after a bye week improved, which is exactly what we needed. I I definitely think that the it's his team, and I think that was the statement that Kirby was given that why in my why I guess Justin Fields didn't really come into the game is that you know to show hey from this is your team. Let's let's get it going because some of those passes and stuff were very like the one pass the passes he made last year to help get us to the national championship and the over the th- shoulder um, throws that he was throwing to his wide receiver. I mean, they where he had to to his receivers and the I think the biggest thing too was to see from throw across the middle of the field and not just on the out you know. Going out to that right out of like you know the short routes that he normally does, he was throwing the nada across the field, and I, I think that was a big thing, and, and a big turning point in that game, too is I don't think Florida thought we were going to use our tight ends as much as we ended up because I mean they left nada wide open, and it wasn't just on one pass; it was on five of them to right. where he from hit him, and it was it was right there. I mean, um, the one thing I'll say about is I think going forward, I think that's one of the things that we have to utilize um, is being able to get Nada. Because, I mean, he has some of the best hands of any tight end in college football, in my opinion. And, I mean, to have a weapon like that and, you know, if you start using him right, I mean, that just opens not only the the passing game, but it's going to open everything, the running game and everything else. Because, you know, when you have those kind of weapons, it, it's going to be hard to stop that. I, I, it's going to be interesting to see. I mean, there's been a lot of rumors that, you know, David Pollock's gone on um, ESPN and has said that he doesn't think that we'll be able to keep um, either from or Justin Fields come to the end of the season. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what he will do. I will say, I don't know if you noticed this, Trey, but when I was watching the game, you know, most games this season, Justin Fields has had his helmet off. He's been, you know, talking to other players and stuff. The few times they showed him on the camera, he had his helmet on the whole time and just stood there by himself on the sidelines. So I don't I don't know what that was about, but 
Um, I, d- I definitely think Kirby made a statement and Hey, from this is your team and, and it should be with the way he played. Yeah, I completely agree. And I want, I did want to say, Hey, hello. Um, hello, Isaac not as good to see you again there, buddy. You know, uh, he's a, he's a nightmare matchup. He's got great hands. Also, uh, Charlie Warner getting that, that, uh, I think it was a catch for 35 yards was great. I think yeah. they just probably like, who's that slow kid coming out there. We're not going to, you know, we're not going to cover him. But uh, yeah, it's definitely Fromm's team. Uh, Fromm's team going going forward, and he definitely made a statement. I think it almost had to be maybe mental if they knew going in, like, all right, we're, we're going with you. This is your team. That maybe he kind of relaxed a little bit. And some of his throws look throws look like the ones of of last year, and they had more zip on the ball, good tight spiral. Because earlier in the you know he'd roll out and kind of just float him in there, like he just he wasn't the same he wasn't the same guy. And JJ Holloman really stepped up. He almost looked like. Uh, you know, Javon Wims. Hey, we'll call he uh he was the poor man's AJ. So J JJ Holloman might, might be the poor man's uh, Javon Wims. <laughs> but uh yeah, he looked really good. Terry Godwin had a big big catch, but yeah, just looked really good and uh excited. But yeah, um I hope Fields stay around. Um I know they pretty much burned his red shirt, so that's in there, but maybe he'll stay and battle in the off season. But yeah, maybe he's got some decisions to make it. It'd be good to keep both of them. I guess they're probably focusing on just having it in their back pocket. I believe that we have a 2019 four star coming in. Yeah, I know he's I know he's not as decorated as Fields, so um, you know, one play away. And I hope I hope the kid stays, but I understand the way it is in college football. You know, you want to go and play right away, so can't blame him. But um, I hope he stays. But um, yeah, th- go ahead. yeah, I, I I agree with you on that for sure. That one. With Justin, with Justin Fields, I, I think it would be huge if we're able to keep him, um, you know, because the, the thing is, is if he does leave next year, no matter where he goes, unless it's the FCS, he's going to have to sit out a year. Yeah. Similar to so, Eason. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, you know, I, I don't see why, you know, if I was in his position, hey, if you're looking to leave or, you know, you're worried about all that, well, take your red shirt next year, and then when you know Fromm will only have another year if he stays. So, it, if you compete and everything, then it would be your team. Yeah, exactly. And um, I mean, like you said, if you transfer, you already all right. Your freshman year is gone unless you would go and they would red shirt your year. You're probably looking at two years, and I guess he would be a red shirt sophomore if he did leave. Right. Hopefully not. Yeah. But I'm kind of like uh, Uncle Lou. I don't want us, you know, if Jake Fromm stays a couple more years and we're playing in the Outba- Outback Bowl, you know, his senior year, and then you're seeing Justin Fields in one of the playoff games, you know, you'll be really mad. But um, I just hope he wouldn't go to, you know, another SEC school. I mean, I love – I'm sure Auburn would love to, to get him or even LSU or, you know, the guys that like some of our rejects. But um, we'll see going forward. Yeah, another thing I wanted to mention, it was a little, I guess it was a little embarrassing on the goal line stand. I'm sure you noticed it. Seven tries and we got a field goal. Uh, I just thought that was especially with our offensive line. But I will I will say they were conservative runs, but they did try quarterback sneak. They did try to go to the outside. But um, I guess from the breakdown that I listened to the um, Chip and Griff show or Griff and Chip show, whatever it is, and they had a good point that all the runs went to the left. But I just thought like going forward against a, you know, a good team if we do – play Alabama or even these other teams down the road, you know, Auburn with a good offensive line, I mean, defensive line, you have to be able to score touchdowns and get sevens. I just thought that was pretty, uh, pretty depressing. Seven tries on, on the goal line. Yeah, that, that was rough, but you know, it's, it, the, the issue I think that came to that was it was pretty much the same play that we ran over and over. You know, that's one of those times that if you have that many plays, how do you not, try a play action because they were playing for the the run yep. so you know that that was that perfect moment to try using um nada and do a little play action and mm-hmm. roll out and then boom right across the middle or, or something along those lines but other than that i will say want to say welcome back to swift because Oh, Man, yeah. he he looked as elusive as he did in that SEC championship game against Auburn. Oh yeah, I agree. He, I think the uh, extra week of getting to heal up, and pro- he probably did, uh, you know, rehab. He had that extra step, and you know, he, he finally went over 100 yards, 12 carries for 104 yards, and 
that last touchdown when he kind of ran in the end zone kind of looked like that, like him shot out of a cannon in the Auburn SEC championship game. Um, uh, Holyfield kind of grounded out, had, you know, 20 carries, 71 yards. He, he was, he was there. So yeah, just all around. Um, I think they did stall out a little bit with three, three and outs in the second quarter. And then Frank's throwing that laser, which I, I, I told, uh, Sean and Todd, I was like, when he had that touchdown coming out the first uh, series of the second half, he's like, that he pulled one out of his butt on that. He won't do that again when he threw that laser <laughs> in there. But uh, I guess still questions, looking at the negatives, still questions on the D-line. They did have, I think it was, I think it was 100, over 170 yards rushing. So our D-line is still questionable. And I I'm, I'm just wish they would maybe pull or play, um, pull uh, Nate S. Patrick and Juwan Taylor. I just think they're missing a whole lot of tackles. I know they're – Got more experience, or maybe play like Tyndall or Quay Walker. I know they're a little wet behind the ears, but uh, I'm just not big on those guys going forward because, uh, you know, this week they're going to give a heavy dose of uh, Benny Snell. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, I'm just like li- ins- or linebacker and defensive line are still question marks. Yeah, I agree with that. So looking at a big matchup, it's going to be at Kroger Field, that grocery store name. Um, I believe I looked at it, it holds over 67,000. And uh, I, was, I guess the big thing today I was looking at was um, they, they uh, post uh, billboards of um, some of the players in New York City or uh, in Times Square in New York City. I think it was like a Josh Allen and Benny Snell. I just think that's going to be bu- uh, bulletin board material for Georgia. It's going to motivate them even more. So let's go get your thoughts on that. I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's it, – it, I, think, I think it's funny too. I mean, but it's – you know, it's one of those things they, they don't really know – how, how to take this right now because, you know, it's been years since Kentucky has, you know, even been to where any team in the East really had to worry about them on having a chance at winning the East. And, and I, I think it's one of those things, you know, because they're such a basketball school that, um, you know, they're so used to winning at basketball that they don't even know how to take that they're actually doing, um, having a pretty good year when it comes on the football side of things. I agree. It's going to be their probably biggest game since the 70s. Um, but that was another thing that I like about uh, with us. We've been there before in big games. Fromm's played in big games. I mean, obviously, Rose Bowl, SEC Championship game, playing on the road at Notre Dame. So I, I, I almost feel like we have more experience coming in there. You know, I like Kirby Smart with the game plan. So almost like this game might be overwhelming for them. But I know it's going to be at home. They're going to get up for us. But – um. Another good stat is we've won 19 out of 21. I believe the last time they beat us was 2009. We had four turnovers with Joe Cox. That's all I have to say on that one. You know, it was pretty bad. But um, in the in the month of October, I think they haven't scored over 15 points. I mean, I don't see how they won that game last week at Missouri. I'm sure Missouri fans were just just uh, disappointed. I mean, they beat them up and down the field. It's 14 to three till the last five minutes. They got that punt return and then that jump touchdown. I thought that was a questionable. P.I. call, pass interference call, and that push out looked like uncatchable. But anyway, they got the win. And then you had, uh, was it uh, Stoops was was um, crowd surfing. That was pretty funny on, on Twitter and that video. So I know they're excited. But um, they do have top ten defense. I'm a little leery of that because they, they're good on against our strength, our weaknesses, strength and weaknesses, Benny Snell, which I think they're starting to run him a whole lot. People have kind of figured him out. I think he only had 40 or 50 yards last week, and the week before he struggled. So um, I think he's getting that just kind of like grind. He's getting grinded out towards the end of the year when you're running 30 times. But they do have a really good defense. Josh Allen, um, that cash guy. So they have a top 10 defense statistically. But I just think at the end of the day, we have more talent. And their quarterback, uh, what's his name? Is his name Tracy? I forget his name. Yeah, I believe so. But um, they have a really awesome backup quarterback with an awesome name in Gunner. Gunner okay. Oak. <laughs> nice. That is a good name. Yeah, his name is Terry Wilson. He's got – I think he's got more interceptions than touchdowns, but he had a pretty good game last week. But I think if we can just get some pressure on him, put 8-9 in the box, they are dead last in the SEC in passing. That tells you anything, and we got great secondary. So I just hope they don't start running the ball on us. But uh, my prediction is it's right now uh, ESPN – it started out at 12, but the spread's 9. I got uh, – I'm going to go with 24 to 10. I don't think they're going to score on us that much. I, I could see it being close in the first half. Maybe we're up by a touchdown, but I think a late touchdown by us, and, and we kind of lean on them with our offensive line. 
Also, if we get Ben Cleveland back, which is looking pretty good, he practiced again today. No David Marshall, which would help. Uh, also, it was interesting. I read that Notori Johnson's been um, kind of getting played a defensive line a little bit, which is interesting, converted, so that could help. But, um, yeah, just liking them. Shutting up the crowd, kind of leaning on them in the fourth quarter. I like us uh, 24 to 10. And uh, what's your what's your thoughts on the game? Yeah, I think it's um, it's it's definitely going to be a uh, a good one. I think I think their defense. I definitely want to see how good their. De- I know their defense by the numbers is ranked right there at the top, mm-hmm. um, but again, they've struggled with teams that we have you know beaten pretty well in yeah. teams like Vandy and Mizzou. So I really want to see um, you know how they're defense plays um against more of a hot high octane offense um you know pounding pounding them with the run and then just throwing it while they're um looking for that run um i think too um their quarterback their starter it's going to be interesting to see because during that missouri game they also played their backup gunner hoke a little bit in that game because their starter struggled a little bit so it's going to be interesting to see um, if he struggles a little bit against us because, um, you know, Baker, he he is causing fits on a lot of top receivers um, on anybody we're playing. So, you know, it, it'll be interesting to see. And I think you made a really great point with Benny Snell because I think they – I think it's getting towards the end of the season and he's wearing out a little bit. So – and that's a good thing for us with our running game not being as strong – our running defense not being as strong. Um, so it'll be interesting to see what he does against us. Um, but I, I, I just think we're just going to be, we're going to be too much power. I mean, I think we run Holyfield and Swift kind of like what we did against Florida. Um, and then Fromm drops a few of those dimes in there. I mean, I, I think we win more um, 31 to 17 is, is, is what I, what I think we end up beating Kentucky by. Okay. Yeah, I can definitely see that. Kind of reminds you of last year, um, Kirion Johnson kind of gassing out, getting a little hurt at the end. They just, you know, Auburn just ran him to death. Yep. That's why it's good to have a couple of them. But yeah, I know it's going to be a hostile environment. A little nervous about it, but I do like it that it's three thirty. It's not a night game. Uh, I think it's like sixty-seven thousand in that stadium, Kroger Field. But um, I yeah, I just think we got a little bit more talent than them. I know they're a senior-laden team, so I'm sure next year they'll probably lose a whole lot. I think Benny Snell is finally a senior. Seems like he's been there ten years. But um, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, like I said, uh, I like that we both like him. But uh, should be interesting. Three thirty on CBS. We'll probably, be, I guess, we'll get the B crew because uh, Gary and Brad will be on uh, be on the big uh, LSU uh, Alabama game. But um, we'll, we'll see. Um, ne- yeah, next week jump right in. I guess make some of the picks for this week. Um. First one to look at is number 12, West Virginia, against number 15, Texas. Texas coming off, I watched that game, a little bit of an embarrassing loss at Oklahoma State. So that kind of knocked them back, probably, probably um, broke their hearts on any kind of playoff run. But yeah, we, uh, West Virginia against Texas, Texas minus one. Who you got in that one? Uh, I, I think I think Texas is – I think they're going to fall – I mean – I never thought when when Texas lost to Maryland, I didn't think that they were that good of a team, and I think they just kind of went on the run. Mm. And last week, when I when I did uh, my my pick them with a couple buddies, they I, I had them losing just for um, the reason is, you know, that night game at Oklahoma at Oklahoma State that was a tough one. I, and when they lost that, I, I just don't see them getting back up against West Virginia because. West Virginia, Will Greer is lighting it up, and oh, yeah. I, I, ju- I just think he's gonna he's gonna tear him up with with the passing game. So I, I think uh, West Virginia wins um, 24-17. Okay, so you like a little low scoring? Yep. In at Texas, yeah, I would go with that too. I like I like West Virginia, Will Greer, Heisman Trophy Cannon. I'm gonna go a little higher. I got uh, 38-27 uh, West Virginia. I think too much firepower and. I believe uh, Oklahoma State hung about 38 on. I know it was at Stillwater. But, um, yeah, I like West Virginia in that one. I think we both agree on that one. So the next one to look at is going to be Penn State at Michigan. Michigan minus 10. 
Penn State dropping off a little bit after getting beat by Ohio State that time. I think it also showed that Ohio State maybe not as the juggernaut as everyone thought, getting blasted a couple of weeks ago uh, by Purdue, 49-20. Of course, Purdue and it got beat by uh, Michigan State last week, so everybody's beating everybody up. But Penn State at uh, Michigan, what's your, uh, what's your thoughts on that one? Yeah, I, I think this I think this game is going to be close because I think Penn State, after coming back this past week to win um, with McShorley coming back from being injured earlier in the game, I think they're going to play to to revenge the the loss that they got against Ohio State and and try beating a bigger team in Michigan. I, I just think Michigan's defense, their defense is really good. Um, I, I mean, if you look what – they, they lost to Notre Dame by one score and all the other teams that they've faced, they're not giving up. It's not a high scoring game. Um, but I, I think Michigan's just the, the better team um, all around. And I, I just think they end up pulling it out 21 to 10 over Penn state. Okay. I like that. Yeah. I like, um, I like Michigan's finally got a really, really solid defense quarterback. Uh, is it Patterson's is name? Was it yeah. Zach? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, he's playing. He's playing really well. Finally, found, found him a decent quarterback. So yeah, I'll go with that too. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go. Th- I'm gonna go 2017, Michigan. So I will let. They, I think they will cover. So yeah, Harbaugh, and that's gonna set up uh, set up them for the big Ohio State matchup in a couple of weeks. Hard to believe we're getting close to the end of the season already. But um, yeah, another one to look at is go with Missouri against number 11 Florida coming off the loss. Missouri still hadn't won an SEC game, but they are going to the swamp. That's uh, Florida minus five and a half coming off Georgia, blowing them out. What's your, what's your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, th- I think in, in this one, um, I, I think Mizzou is just – they're in shambles. I mean, you know, they, they rode on – their Drew Locke is, you know – he, he's an NFL caliber quarterback. He's going to do all this. I just don't – they've got too many holes on offense. It's yeah. too many holes on defense. Um, I, I just think Florida is just a better team against them. I, I think Florida ends up winning um, – I'm going to go 38 to 21 over Mizzou. Okay, like good clean cover. Yeah, I agree with that. I like uh, Florida with a chip on their shoulder, especially coming back being at home. They were a pretty good team. I think Franks will get going again against a lesser Missouri defense. I'm gonna go. Uh, I'm gonna go 31 to 14, and they're able to give uh, Drew Locke some problems, especially being at home. I don't think he's played that well on the road. Nope. And then the next one's gonna be Notre Dame minus nine and a half against Northwestern. I'll go ahead and make, pull this one out. This is gonna be my dog of the week. I, I didn't cover last week. I picked Texas A&M. Um, against Mississippi State. They kind of laid an egg on that one. They got beat 28-13. So that, and I was also looking at that Missouri-Kentucky game. I think that was one of those where it looked a little too juicy. Vegas put those spreads up. Of course, they always know something. But anyway, this week I like Northwestern keeping it really close. They're per- they're, they're pretty good at home, coming off a win. They have considerably gotten better each week. So I like keeping it close, and I like uh, Northwestern plus nine and a half. Um, I don't think they would. I don't think they're going to win. Even though I wish Northwestern pull off the upset because that would shut up North, Notre Dame in the in the playoff talks. But uh, I like Northwestern keeping it close. So I like Northwestern covering plus nine and a half as my dog of the week. Nice. What's your uh, uh, what's, what's your prediction on? That one? Yeah, so I, I think you're spot on on that one. Though I'm going to go ahead and tell you, I, I'm picking Northwestern for the upset. Nice. Northwestern, they have played – so they've lost um, all their non-conference games so far this season, but they're 5-1 and one in the Big Ten. Right. So, I mean, the, the crazy thing to think about it, uh, there's a shot that you could have a 8-4 and four or 7-5 and five team in the Big Ten championship, um, wow. which is just crazy to think. But I, I, think, I think Northwestern finds a way because – Notre Dame all season have just some of these games just skated by. Um, and, and I think I think Northwestern, because they play great as the underdog. Whenever they're the favorite, Duke, Army, they lose. When they're the underdog, right now they're playing pretty good. Um, so I think Northwestern pulls the upset over Notre Dame 24 to 21. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, and looking at a couple of their losses, lost to Michigan by three. Um, actually beat Michigan State by 10 on the road. Blasted uh, Wisconsin last week, 31-17, who was ranked 20th. So I just feel like they're kind of trending up. But, yeah, I like uh, – and that's – Northwestern might be a tough place to play. It is a night game. might be a little nippy there. So, uh, yeah, I like that. And then going to the big boom daddy, Alabama at LSU, Baton Rouge. It's going to be 8 o'clock, CBS, Gary and Brad. It's going to be the drunk Cajuns. No Devon uh, White. He got – um. this is going to kind of hurt him. I think it's a conspiracy. Everybody wants Alabama to win. But uh, he got that targeting penalty a couple weeks ago. They are coming off a bye week, both teams. But it's uh, Alabama minus 14, and can they somehow stop Tua um, at Baton Rouge? I guess you can go ahead and go first. Yeah, that's uh, – that's, that, I mean, that's really going to be the biggest thing. Can they stop them? But the one thing I will say is if anybody's secondary can do it, it's LSU's. In my opinion, they have one of the best secondaries in college football. Their defense, they actually have a pass rush. So, um, you know, Taya, he hasn't really got to face a team like this defense at LSU. So it's going to be really interesting to see what he does in a full game. He saw us briefly – in that national championship game, but he hasn't faced a high power defense like LSU has. Um, it, it's, I, I want to see how LSU's quarterback plays in this big game. Yeah. He's played good and, and been a game manager for them um, all season, but I want to see if, cause I think it's going to come down to, he's going to have to make a couple throws to beat Alabama. Um, they're not just going to be able to just run the ball and, and, and hope that's the difference. He's going to have to make a couple passes. I think that he does. Um, I, I, I'm going to pull – I'm going with uh, LSU with the upset 17-14 to 14 in a good old barn burner. Really? I like it, man. And you know, you know where that – you know what it's looking at for us. We would love uh, a second shot. The dogs at him. I think we, we would have a totally different game in Mercedes-Benz after uh, – could be a little repeat of last year, I hope. But, yeah. Um, I'm really pulling for him. Of course, I'd want to just because I think the matchup would be better with LSU. But I just think – and the keys to the game, like you said, I think you somehow got to stop uh, two in the first quarter because they've outscored teams. I think it's at some credible – a crazy number, like 118 points or more in the first quarter. They just dog people in the first half and they just jump out and you can't you can't catch them and you're playing catch-up. I mean, and this this Alabama defense is a step back more than normal Alabama defenses. I mean, Arkansas hung 31 on them, uh, I believe. Uh, is it Missouri? Almost, I think, put 20 on them. So you can score on them. And as you said, I think they're going to slow down Tua a little bit, and they're not they're not able to run the ball as effective as they usually are. And they haven't made it into the fourth quarter, and they haven't had any adversity. So I want to kind of see that. It's going to be a hostile environment. But at the end of the day, I still think this two of kids just something no one's ever seen before. And I'm going to go hanging with them and they'll pull away at the very end. I'm going to go 38-17 uh, Alabama, even though um, I'm praying that you know, I'd be wrong. But until <laughs> until, I, until I see somebody prove me wrong, I can hang with them. But this will be their toughest game to date. I think they'll actually make it to the fourth quarter and stress out a little bit. But – they're, I mean, as as uh, Georgia got blown out in Baton Rouge, they're, they were they're seven and zero against top ten teams that are not Alabama since uh, was it two thousand nine or whatever that stat is. So I'm gonna go with Alabama, even though I don't want to, but I think it's gonna be a close game. Yeah, um, I, I think it's gonna be interesting to see what this committee looks at the most because do they um, as Herb Street. Um, I heard on the Fine Bomb show was talking about that it'll be interesting to see what this playoff committee values. Do they value the strength of schedule? What are they valuing? Because they've the previous committees have said that a one loss team, just because they have a loss, if they played better teams, they'll put them above a team that's undefeated. So it'll be interesting to see if because LSU is the only team in um, the rankings that has beaten three top 10 teams this season. And right. some of the ranked teams that they beat, they're not ranked now, but when they played them, everybody saw it. They, um, 
in that Miami game, and then also how they beat Auburn um, at Auburn. So I, I think it'll be interesting to see um, if they do Alabama LSU one and two because they're playing this week. Um, because that's something the committee has done before. Um, so it'll be it'll be interesting to see what they do with that. Uh, but I think they're going to I, – what I think they're going to do, they're going to do Bama 1, Clemson 2, um, and then I think they do LSU 3 and then Notre Dame 4. And then I think they have Michigan 5 and us and Georgia 6 and then Oklahoma 7. Okay. Is that your, is that your 4? That is. Okay. Mine's a little different, but I, I definitely agree with yours. I can see where it is. I'm going to go with, I got Bama first, number two is Clemson. I'm going to go with number three, Notre Dame, because they are undefeated. And I got Michigan uh, fourth, just Ooh. because fifth, having LSU, they did have that Florida loss, and Florida getting blasted this past week made them look a little weaker. But I could definitely see flip-flopping in there, maybe LSU four. But uh, yeah, I got Michigan four. I think they're kind of trending up. And if they can be Penn State this week, but uh, that's that's mine. But it's it's up for debate. Uh, so Bama one, Clemson two, Notre Dame three, Michigan four. But uh, all we got to do is take take care of business, and you know we'll we'll get it done. For Georgia. Um. Any uh. Sorry. Any um, how about one last thing? Any any uh, guys you're going to uh, for uh, how about Heisman Trophy candidates? I think any, any, I think Tab- anybody towards that? No, nah, I think I think I think Bama's quarterback has it locked. I think um, if it wasn't for him, Oklahoma's quarterback uh, would be it. It would pretty much almost be a lock for him because he's having a, a phenomenal season for Oklahoma. The what that that kid can throw it all over the place and run, he's really good. But just the the when when you have when you're when you have a quarterback that's having games like Bama's to where he has more touchdowns thrown than he does in incompletions. I mean that's that's just that's video game stats. You don't see that, and he's he's doing it. It's all it almost feels like every game to where he one up one up himself like. He, I've never seen a quarterback the way he can just hit a 50-yard pass in stride almost every time. So I, I think unless he gets severely hurt or anything, which hope nothing like that happens, but if it did, I think that's the only way he really loses uh, the Heisman at this point. They going with Tua. Okay, I got you. Um, yeah, I, I can see that too. I think the only thing that might hurt him is has he played to the fourth quarter, has he played the whole time, but – I think they'll be his two. If it, this will be his true test, I mean, if he if he they hang like I don't know forty five or forty nine on him, and he has like another crazy three hundred yard four touchdown game. I mean, that's, that's I think that's kind of like his stamp is you know he's gonna be he's gonna be the man. But if he struggles and they show him that he's human, then it might get a little might get interesting after that. Yep, I agree with that. All right, man. We well, appreciate you uh, coming on last minute here and, and joining it. Uh, anything you want to get off your chest? Anything you wanna you wanna add? No, I wanted to thank you again for having me. No, no problem. And uh, everybody, please follow us again on uh, we got YouTube. We're on uh, Facebook, also on 247, also we post on the Dog Nation forum. So uh, thanks for joining us again, and, uh, and we're out.